welcome to Bin Banter. Recycling is the process of collecting and processing materials that would otherwise be thrown away as trash and turning them into new products. Recycling benefits your community, the economy, and the environment. In today's episode, we are going to follow the journey of single stream recycling. Join the journey of recycling and learn about where recyclable items go after they are picked up from your home, business, or community recyclables collection site. Watch how the employees and machines at First Star Fiber, a local material recovery facility, make sure your recyclables are recovered and ready to be made into something new. At the end of the video, we will show you what doesn't belong in your recycling bin. The more you know, the safer recycling is for everyone involved in this complex, exciting process. Let's get ready to recycle! When recycling is picked up from your home, business, or a community recyclables collection site, the recyclable materials are emptied into the hopper of the rear load recycling truck. The truck then compacts or squeezes the recyclables in order to fit as many as they can into a truck during recycling route. Once the recycling truck is full, it will need to be emptied. The driver takes the rear load truck to the tipping floor of the material recovery facility, otherwise known as an MRF. For this recycling facility, they transferred materials from Lincoln to their larger location in Omaha. Once the recyclables arrive at the MRF in Omaha, they will start their separation journey. As trucks arrive and empty the recyclables on the tipping floor, a front end loader will make sure the tipping floor is clear so more recyclables can arrive. The loader also scoops up recyclables and loads them into a feeding container called a metering bin. This feeding container helps with an even flow of material as it's conveyed up to the pre-sort line. Pre-sort is a very important first step in the recycling process. The pre-sort helps to remove items from the recycling stream that people have wish-cycled. Wish-cycling is putting something into the recycling bin that you wish could be recycled, but it can't in single-stream recycling. Wish-cycling is dangerous for workers and the machines that sort the materials. Items that tangle such as hoses, holiday lights, grocery bags, extension cords, and plastic film will get caught in the machines and will have to stop the process and manually be cut out of the machines. Electronics and batteries can cause fires. It is extremely important for each person to learn what can and can't go into the recycling bin to keep the recycling workers and the equipment safe. After the pre-sort line, the material will flow across the disc or star screen to remove the corrugated cardboard. If cardboard boxes are not flattened, they might miss their separation stop on the star screen. You can help solve this problem by making sure you flatten your cardboard boxes before recycling them. Once the recyclables are sorted, other areas of the operation will start the baling process seen here. The bale will be extruded from the machine, stacked, and eventually sold to a mill. All recyclables will be baled and sold. The mill purchasing recyclable materials will reprocess the material to make it into something new, like a cardboard box, aluminum can, or plastic bottle. The next item to be sorted is newspaper and paperboard. Newspaper and paperboard fall off of the machine, creating a pile waiting to be baled just like we saw with the cardboard. The rest of the fiber, including mailings, magazines, or office paper, as well as aluminum, tin, and plastic will move on to the next steps of the sorting process. During this process, an optical machine will work to remove everything that is not paper. The paper will continue in one direction, while the tin, aluminum, and plastics go in the opposite direction. In recycling, the dimensions of the recyclable materials are very important. The machines look to sort two-dimensional and three-dimensional items. Because paper is two-dimensional, the machine does a good job of pulling out a lot of the paper. Remember earlier when we told you to make sure and flatten your cardboard? When an item, such as a small cardboard box, isn't flattened, it becomes three-dimensional, and many times it ends up where it doesn't belong. Staff and machines work together to make sure the remaining three-dimensional cardboard or paperboard boxes are removed so that they do not contaminate the aluminum, tin, and plastic that still need to be sorted. Once all the fiber is out, the aluminum, tin, and plastics make their way down the conveyor belt to the next machine focused only on three-dimensional objects. At these machines, the first stop is an optical sorter looking for different types of plastics. Plastics are made of different types of resin. All plastic must be sorted by the same type or number on the plastic bottle. 
The optical sorter helps sort the PET or number one plastic. You can find this type of plastic used in shampoo bottles, hand soap bottles, carbonated soft drinks, and more. PET plastics are sorted out first because they are the largest quantity of plastic containers. Then the sort line separates plastics number three through seven and number two, HDPE or milk jugs. A robot will help pick out cartons, including milk and orange juice cartons, and separate them into yet another bin. Tin, aluminum, and a few other remaining items that remain on the conveyor belt are the last to be removed. A large magnet will remove the tin cans and drop them into a large holding container. Employees will manually remove any additional number one plastics that may have been missed in the optical sorter and hand sort number two by color. Last, an eddy current will remove the aluminum cans and put them in a large holding container. I know many people like to smash their aluminum cans, but smashed cans can act like a two-dimensional object instead of a three-dimensional object. Quick tip, to make sure your cans get recycled, don't smash them. Many people also like to wish cycle other aluminum items such as aluminum foil pie tins, aluminum foil, aerosol containers such as hairspray or cooking spray, or other scrap metals and pet food cans. To remove these items, a recycling worker stands at the end of the conveyor belt near the eddy current to remove these wish-cycled items. Once sorted, recyclables are baled. These baled recyclables have made it through the recycling process and are ready to be made into something new. Recycling not only provides jobs, but it helps to conserve the limited natural resources that exist on our planet. For example, by recycling paper, we reduce the need to cut down new trees to make paper, toilet paper, paper towels, tissues, and more. By recycling plastic, we reduce the need to extract more oil to make new plastic from that oil. Recycling aluminum can help protect the environment by reducing the need to mine the earth for more aluminum. Aluminum is recycled so efficiently that it can be processed and back on the shelf in approximately 60 days. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA data, shows us how recycling reduces greenhouse gas emissions and saves energy. Without recycling, our landfills would fill up much faster and resources would be buried in the ground instead of being used again. Now that you have learned about the process of recycling, make sure you are not wish cycling at your home, business, or the recyclables collection site. You have the power to help keep workers and material recovery facilities safe. With your help to recycle the right items, you can make a big difference in your community and in the world. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Bin Banter.